Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Paul and the Reed. I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. So honored to have this guest on Talk of the Desert because he's doing something very special for the Desert Diabetes Club at Eisenhower Medical Center on March 17th. And this man has been in our living rooms and bedrooms <laughs> for a number of years, and that's Alan Thick. Alan, thank you so much for joining me on Talk of the Desert. Thank you. I want to hear more about being in your living room. <laughs> I would have remembered something like that. You would have remembered something like that. Well, look at you on growing pains yeah. for seven years. Yes. I mean, that's an amazing run for any actor. We were uh, relentless, unavoidable. <laughs> <laughs> That's because everybody loved you and loved the family. Well, it was a special kind of uh, show. It was uh, truly the last of uh, a breed, those oh. so-called family shows that could be on in the family hour where everybody could sit down and yeah. watch them. Uh, the uh, Nielsen research from 20-odd years ago started to uh, indicate that uh, families now had two TVs. So they could have one programmed for the kids and right. one for the grown-ups, and right. that was really the end of an era of shows like Who's the uh, Boss and Family yeah. Ties and Growing Pains and Cosby. And that's why we get residuals today, because they literally don't make them like they used to. Oh, and, I, I, and that's disgusting to me, because I like your kinds of shows, you know? Well, they, they, yeah, they were fun. You know, people what? often ask, uh, gee, should you bring that back? Should you redo it? No, you really shouldn't. You should leave them there in the time capsule where they're wonderful nostalgia and they look terrific. If you try to make that kind of a show nowadays, uh, and a couple of people have, it, it, it looks dated. It looks, um, it's it just not uh, contemporary. It well, doesn't have that kind of hey, tone. Hey, you get residuals off of it, right? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the residuals are a beautiful thing. That's aren't right, they? exactly, exactly. Well, I read someplace that TV Guide, out of the top 50 TV dads, that you ranked 37th? Uh, I was in the 30s there yeah. somewhere. I keep campaigning to get moved up. I hope that maybe uh, in a few years they'll revisit that and I'll make it into the 20s. But honored to be uh, one of the uh, all-time dads. I love yeah, that. Absolutely. I keep absolutely. reminding my children of that when they pay me absolutely no respect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, yeah, but you've written a couple books, and we're going to talk about that. But, Alan, part of the reason that you are a celebrity keynote speaker on March 17th for the Jim Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes is that, I would say sadly, but we, so many millions of people have diabetes, is that your oldest son has diabetes. Uh, my eldest son, Brennan, uh, got it when he was four. Uh, we were shocked by the horrible statistic that from the moment you get it, your life is uh, yeah. probably potentially shortened by a third. Um, and, and then as a parent, you, you, you need to do something for your own personal therapy. You need to get involved. Right. You can't sit back and people applaud you and say, oh, isn't it great that you get, no, it's not great. What else are you going to do? You go crazy if you sit around while you're kid has a chronic illness. So I got very involved. I joined every organization I could possibly uh, join to try to help the cause, to try to find a cure, to, to try to fund research, uh, and, and just to uh, know more about the disease and how to better care for him. So it's been a long road. He's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm constantly scolding him about his <laughs> weight. He's not a, a highly disciplined diabetic, and I try to keep him, reminding him he needs to be in shape and take care of himself. A wonderful uh, uh, young man, and he's given me a fabulous grandson, oh, fantastic. who's now three and a half. Oh. So uh, life is good, but uh, it's a problem, and it's a ticking time bomb. Well, as I mentioned to you, that I was diagnosed when I with type one diabetes when I was three and a half, and now I'm commemorating here in February, uh, 51 years with living with type one diabetes, and it's a balancing act every moment of my mm -hmm, life mm -hmm. between diet and exercise and medication, and home blood testing yeah. and. Adding Attitude. Yeah. An attitude to me for any disease really, well, just in life, plays a major, 
major part of that. And so. you're clearly one of the uh, a good example of yeah. how to take care of yourself. There are plenty of examples of, of, of people who abuse themselves when they really need to take hyper care of themselves with that disease. But um, it, it, you know, and uh, the public, if you're not affected by uh, diabetes, there's a tendency to just glance over the headlines once in a while and read, hey, a new cure for diabetes right. or a new treatment, right. and they think it's taken care of, and it's really not. After uh, these 30 odd years that I've been involved, uh, we're still delivering insulin the same way, we're still blood testing, and it, there, there, we don't seem to be very close to a cure, frankly, and that's very frustrating. I mean, uh, certainly not in ways that could affect my son or our lifetimes. Yes and it just never happens fast enough for parents yeah, or for the people who live with it mm -hmm. <laughs> and like i said it's a it's a constant battle but now you have the allen thick center for juvenile diabetes research in canada because you are canadian uh i am i am i am uh, I, I check in with uh, ins regularly i'm a, still a canadian citizen are you I'm a, a registered alien here <laughs> um, but, but you're uh, not illegal right no, no. <laughs> i uh, uh, I, I started this uh, foundation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm proud to say, at, at the exact uh, facility, the university, where insulin was discovered. So uh, uh, one of the leading diabetology centers in, in the world, for that matter, they're on the cutting edge of uh, pancreatic uh, islet cell transplant uh, experimentation. And um, I, again, I, it, you need to do something. And the, the most significant thing I could do was at my alma mater, this is where I graduated, uh, and uh, to fund that and to try to find a cure. And uh, we've been at it, uh, raised millions of dollars over these years, but there's no, <coughs> pardon me, no cure yet. Yes, well, it's a doctor's banting and doctor's best from Canada. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for them in 1922 discovering insulin, I don't know how many <coughs> multi millions of people would have passed away from yes, this disease. Yes, yes, uh, very important. And so I'm proud that that was uh, my university. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, now let's, Alan, let's talk about this fantastic career you have had and continue to have over all these years on television and film and Broadway. And, You've done everything, haven't you? <laughs> I, I used to refer to myself as a master of B talent. You know, there, there was never any one thing that I did great. <laughs> now, we got to see him do that again. Uh, uh, but uh, the, the fun of my career has been the variety of it. I have uh, been able to do a, a lot of things uh, uh, well enough that I got to experience them and got to, to play in those arenas. I, I started as a writer. And I had a wonderful career as a writer, writing in the heyday of uh, variety television for uh, a, a lot of uh, great uh, television variety shows. Uh, the, the, most of the stars of those shows have moved down to the desert at some time or another. <laughs> yes, I've probably been on talk of the desert, too. Or grow older. <laughs> yeah, you've probably been guests yeah. of you. But um, uh, I, I wrote for... Um, uh, Richard Pryor uh, the television show and the Flip Wilson show and Glenn Campbell and Mac Davis and Livy Newton-John and and uh, Barry Manilow and Tony Orlando and uh, Anne Murray and I had a wonderful uh, broad experience of, of writing those variety shows and then it was after that that I sort of accidentally ended up on camera in Canada as a talk show host that was a, a wildly successful show that they then brought down here and became a total dud in a late night show <laughs> against Johnny Carson. But that led me to growing pains and I've had a good life ever since. Yeah, absolutely. Now, did you train in writing in college or what was your major? No, I didn't. I, I actually started in uh, uh, theology, threatening to be uh, a minister. And then uh, my dad, who was a doctor, he kind of <clears throat> steered me into medicine, which I always thought was uh, God's way of punishing me for considering theology because <laughs> um, I really didn't have the stomach for that. Yeah. I, I, I fainted, I wimped out of uh, medical school. So you um, wouldn't make a good person with diabetes with all the blood work we have oh, to have no. done. Well, you know, <laughs> interestingly, I think you, 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 uh, you respond to your loved ones differently. Yes. You know, to the fact that it was my, my son, mm -hmm. You can do anything for your kid. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, you know, I get chapped lips and I need to lie down. <laughs> I'm gonna faint. <laughs> but but uh, you rise to the occasion for your kids, and um, uh, so I, I, I uh, started off in in uh, rock bands after college, 
And uh, then I was ex finding out that I was experiencing in, in clubs that I was working in for about a year with, uh, with a band that um, they, were, uh, they were talking while I was singing and they would be quiet and listen while I spoke. So I thought, aha, this is, I got to change direction here a little bit. I should talk more. <laughs> I should tell some jokes and not sing so much. So that became the, the direction as I did more patter. Uh, I was writing material and I took that written material and uh, auditioned with it uh, as a writer and, and started a career that way. It, it's just amazing. And also, I've read in your bio, and I doubt that many people know, that you wrote the theme songs to Facts of Life and Different Strokes and you sang those songs. I, I did. I, I sang <laughs> the uh, theme to uh, Different Strokes. <clears throat> and. Um, I, I wrote actually over 40 uh, theme songs, and oh, I did that. That, that was a throwback to my days in this college bar band, because uh, I did learn four chords. <laughs> and then I kept moving those chords around until they caught me. And later on, I said, hey, he's only got four chords. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we still okay. got the th songs on the air. Okay, so once <clears> you <throat> moved to the United States with your TV show that didn't work out, uh, your talk show, where did your career lead from go to there? What was your next uh, step? I was very lucky to uh, have growing pains. Again, I, I put on my writer's hat, yeah. uh, which had been successful for me. I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had seven Emmy nominations uh, and, and only two as an actor. I, five of them were as a writer. So uh, when the talk show failed, I put on my writer's hat and I created a couple of show concepts and I went in to meet with a couple of the network guys. And uh, while I was there, they would say, yeah, well, we like your idea. We'll give you a few bucks. We'll develop that. But you know what? There's this other show that uh, we're trying to do a pilot for. And we think you, you might be good for that. We're, they were kind of looking for an Alan Thicke type. And, well, excuse me. <laughs> better, who's you know, better than Alan Thicke, The alternative right? was I was going to be driving the Zamboni uh, for the Kings. <clears throat> so, That's right. You're a hockey player, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, Canadian. I, I, I signed up. I said, yeah, please, let me, let me go read for that. And that was growing pain. Yeah. Now, did I see something on the Internet that uh, another person that was possibly up for the part was Bruce Willis? Well, th there were a few guys mm -hmm. around that time that they thought they might want to do something with. I remember David Rashi was one of them, and Bruce Willis, and myself, John Davidson. And we all got little pilot deals and, and, and uh, tries at things, and uh, th th those could have gone in either direction, you know. So I, I guess uh, hypothetically, Bruce Willis could have been the father on Growing Pains, and I could have been making out with Sybil Shepherd and some. <laughs> action adventure <laughs> but uh, I guess everybody was happy the way things turned out well I'm definitely for you and for the American audience because well you're ranked number 37 of TV dad and I moving mean, up and moving way, up I that's hope. right <laughs> I'm not done <laughs> <laughs> very cute well um, what do you think made growing pains work was the combination of actors was it the chemistry you know, there's so many factors. Uh, uh, I think it always starts with the writing. And um, then you do need uh, uh, the right casting, yeah. and, that, and that cast even has to have the right chemistry. You can get some fine actors, but if they're not gelling, it doesn't work. And then there are some more mundane business-type factors, like what night are you on? Are you on a strong network? Mm -hmm. Is that network kicking butt that mm -hmm. year? Uh, do you have a strong lead in? Who's your lead out? Who are you on against? What's yeah. your time slot? So all of those factors oh, no. come into it. Yeah. Uh, we were, uh, I'll never forget a headline in the uh, uh, LA newspaper uh, as we were debuting. We were on against the A-team and oh, the yes. A-team had been terribly strong mm -hmm. and I was off this canceled embarrassing <laughs> talk show <laughs> and uh, Elvis, whatever his name is, was a uh, uh, the reporter at the time and I remember being bitter about him uh, ever since. He's gone on to be a, a film critic but he wrote, the headline was, pity the poor fool who puts Alan Thicke on against the A-team. And I, that was crushing to me. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but within two weeks, we had pretty much knocked the A-team wow. off the air. Wow. And we uh, can partially thank Tony Danza for that, because who's the boss was our lead-in. Mm -hmm. They did fine. We came on after them. Between the two of us, we beat up on the A-team. They were gone. 
<laughs> and I still don't like that reviewer for such a <laughs> mean, can't. nasty, hurtful, no joke. painful no joke. thing to say. And to do that to the Alan Thicke, oh, that's terrible. But I wasn't even the Alan <laughs> Thicke then. I'm just a <laughs> clown. Well, speaking bozo. about the Alan Thicke, <clears throat> Alan, you're going to be our celebrity keynote speaker on March 17th, mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Um, oh, you're Irish Catholic, too, aren't you? Irish Canadian. Irish. My, my family name is uh, Brennan. My, my eldest son's name is Brennan. Yeah. Uh, well, so I'm going to come to the desert and talk about potatoes. Yeah, well, but of course, because it's yeah. March 17th, yeah. St. Patrick's about the Day. potato famine. At the uh, Annenberg Center for Health Sciences mm. on the campus of Eisenhower Medical Center. Starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, goes to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. You're speaking at 11 a.m. Really? for 45 minutes. Who, who's listening? Who am I talking to? Well, let's time? hope we have, we normally have about 1,000 attendees. Really? It's a totally free day to anybody who has diabetes or uh -huh. any of the family members or anybody who's interested in taking care of themselves Isn't that nice? with diabetes. And what will our demographic be that day? A mixture well, of family, it's a mi children? It's a mixture um, because Palm Springs is an older community. Mm -hmm. We normally have a more older people attend, a lot of type 2s. But we, but we also take care of type 1s because obviously that's what I have. That's what your son has yeah, and everything. Yeah. But 11 a.m. on March 17th. And, Alan, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about the career and, again, promote the Day of Vote for Diabetes. Okay. We'll be right back with Alan. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics popular songs from theater and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. You can always see something extraordinary that inspires you here. It captivates, thrills, and delights us. That's why the McCallum Theater is so special. Here, you can see award-winning Broadway musicals and plays, sparkling performances by the biggest stars, and all the best from the world of music, dance, and comedy. So come, join us, right here at the McCallum Theater. So thrilled, again, to have Alan Thicke as a guest on Talk of the Desert, and also thrilled that he is going to be our celebrity keynote speaker at the Jim Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes on March 17th at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences on the campus of Eisenhower Medical Center starting at 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and he's speaking at 11 a.m. I have to and bust you for a you second. Have, you have I to believe bust that me. only seconds ago and I'm not sure yes. if audio picked it up, but you whacked the table with this excessive <laughs> bling. <laughs> yes. You, you're the most I did. remarkably <laughs> accessorized woman. Well, you, it's you sweetheart. all quite perfect. Thank you. Thank you. But yes, I, I think did, when you brought did, your hand you did well, something like that. I talk that. with my hands. I should have been Italian. No, but that was <laughs> Uh, I, it's a wonder you get your hands up in the air at all with all that stuff. I travel light. <laughs> well, Alan, besides doing growing pains, again, like I said, you were in everybody's living room and bedrooms for uh -oh. seven years. You are also a superb MC of many events. And, you know, I find a lot of actors can't go to emceeing events because it takes a certain talent. Well, remember, I went the other direction. I, I started... As a writer, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm writing for other people and trying to put appropriate things in their mouths to say. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then years later, I'm a talk show host, as yeah. you are. So you get accustomed to uh, uh, extemporaneously uh, speaking and making stuff up uh, and, and, and trying to make a conversation flow. So I think those are kind of the skills that are important in uh, emceeing and uh, uh, acting came second, you know, so I, 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 my, my background was really more in, in that. And I love to MC shows and host uh, events. I mean, uh, it, it'll be great fun to speak for 30 or 40 minutes, but rather than listen to myself drone on for 30 or 40 minutes, I love those events where I get to go and do 10 minutes and then you introduce people and it's I do a lot of sports events around the country. I do uh, uh, health-related uh, mm -hmm. uh, events and award shows, and I really quite enjoy that. It keeps you on your toes. You need to uh, know what's happening in that community. You need to know what's happening in the, the news that morning. That's right. uh, I, I quite like that. And uh, 
Uh, the other thing that I, I, I'm doing a lot of uh, these days, I have a humor column in the Huffington Post that I, that I write, and that has turned into a radio monologue. We do a 90-second version of that. Uh, for radio, and then and uh, where is that? What radio it, stations is it carried it's, it's, on? Or that's just... syndicated uh -huh. by uh, Envision. Uh, which so you heard all over the country where, then? Yeah, yeah. And uh, by the way, that will th that has started in March. Okay. And um, uh, the other thing that I get to do now is because there's this body of work from these columns, I get to uh, uh, go out and essentially uh, kind of read those for 15 or 20 minutes and then do a Q&A. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, 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 it's, it's nice because finding your own voice on paper uh, in, in a way that you hope is, is humorous and amusing is kind of difficult. It's easier when you get to deliver it, your inflection, your attitude, your facial expressions, etc. But finding a comedic voice on paper has been an interesting uh, challenge. It's, uh, uh, I, I like it. I'm enjoying it. Good for you. Now, you said you have a new TV show coming up in March? It's called Alan Thicke's Hot Package. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, it's uh, kind of a takeoff on uh, Entertainment Tonight, and uh, we've taped seven episodes, so uh, by around now we'll know how it's doing. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's doing very <coughs> well. And I got on your um, internet site last night, alanthicke.com, and uh, clicked on some video excerpts. And, you know, we always think of you as playing this well, growing pains, father, right? Boy, you've played some mean parts <laughs> along the well, way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, and uh, <clears throat> what made those interesting, I think, for the directors, for the producers, is that, <clears throat> pardon me, you buy into this uh, sort of all-American dad-type yep. character that you, you, you know and trust, and then by the second act, uh, I'm stabbing my wife or beating my kids or shooting a senator or doing something you, you didn't expect. So it, it kind of works for the plot that uh, there's that right. surprise coming up. Well, you have a, a reel of a lot of things that you've done over your career on your internet site, and it's, it's I think it's eight minutes in length, something like that. It was so much fun to watch that last well, night. Well, thank you, yeah, thank so you. I, I, you must, I must go revisit that and yeah. see what they've got out there. Because now with, you know, with YouTube, the internet yeah. stuff shows up that you don't Oh, even remember. That's right. And uh, much of which you might find somewhat embarrassing, but uh, it's part of our legacy, I guess. Yeah. Well, which parts do you like to play, the good guy or the bad guy? You know, nowadays I'm, I, I kind of enjoy the bad guy just because I've, I've enjoyed the good guy <laughs> for so long, and, and it, it is nice to uh, pull a bit of a surprise. I have a, uh, a, a tiny role in an Adam Sandler movie that's uh, coming out this spring where I play a very bad dad. And uh, th th that juxtaposition and that reversal of character is, I guess, what's funny about it. Now, tell me about your stage shows. Like, you've performed at uh, Foxwoods and uh, Turning Stone Casino and Atlantic City Resort. What? Tell me about your stage show. Well, uh, in, in those cases, you know, uh, casinos and resorts, they'll mount a big variety show, and that's a perfect combination for me because, as I said, I get to come in and do 10 minutes and then I introduce uh, other people. So I'm, I'm there for a, a couple of hours, but uh, mm -hmm. low pressure, low impact, and yeah. uh, I, I enjoy those a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I hosted a lot of pageants over the years. Yes, so well, I see I'm a pageant girl, so uh, I know yeah, about yeah. that. I, yes. I, I hosted Miss Universe and Miss World and Miss USA. And uh, and also Mrs. World. You went to Vietnam a couple of years I did, ago. I did. Yes. I did. I did. I hosted a couple of Misses. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so lots of fun. I enjoy it. It's a, an easy format, and I kind of comfortable with it and like I said I can do my few minutes and then just enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, well, and you get to and those you get to look at pretty girls too. Uh, th there are uh, no there's no shortage. No shortage. <laughs> well, especially in the industry that you're in. Now, on the event for the Day of Hope for Diabetes on March 17th, uh, you have several different speeches that you present, but we have selected as the board of directors your health care and health carelessness. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the presentation going to be on March well, 17th? Well, what, what, I, what I try to do, and uh, it, it's kind of adaptable uh, 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 around the country. I've done elements of that presentation to, to heart disease, to cancer, to uh, 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 alcoholism, dementia. I've, I've, you know, it, it, it's adaptable because there's a universality to the way we respond to illness yes. uh, and 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 I, I look at it as a 
a family, uh, it takes a village, it's a network of people. Um, how you respond emotionally and uh, physically to, uh, as caregivers. Um, and and uh, diabetes is uh, certainly no exception. I, I would call myself the poster boy for <laughs> affliction uh, in this <laughs> well, you country said because ev everything's of, every, every disease or a lot of diseases has affected your family personally. Nothing ever happened in my family till I was in my 40s, and then bam, it's just all over the place. <laughs> it was leukemia, it oh. was uh, uh, Alzheimer's, it was alcoholism, it was diabetes, it was. Uh, uh, stroke, uh, uh, prostate, can't, I mean, we, we did kind of have it all, and you, you, you learn and you find that common ground. Uh, of, uh, and uh, my, my, my uh, stepmother, in fact, is a grief counselor. Oh, really? Uh, I learned a lot from her. My, my dad still practices medicine in Toronto. Oh, excellent. Uh, he also uh, plays a lot of golf and flies his own airplane at the age of 82. Yeah. So, uh, and I've seen him play golf, and that's why I won't fly with him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cute. But, uh, but he, he, he's a great guy, and obviously I have all of those uh, influences. So I do have a little bit of... Uh, and I've been involved in so many uh, charitable uh, activities that uh, uh, f uh, related to health care. And the reason uh, for that is that it's a very incestuous kind of community. Uh, if I do your charity, you're going to do mine, right. and everybody wins. Right, you know, exactly. I'll come play in your golf well, uh, tournament, and, uh, and you'll, you'll Alan, come and sing at my... Everybody will win who attends the Jim Cook Day of Hope for Diabetes on Saturday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, Good. at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences at Eisenhower Medical Center. It's 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Alan Thick will be speaking at 11 a.m. for about 45 minutes. And I can Alan, you can't believe how thrilled we are for uh, having you and being involved you. in our event. Well, I'm going to tell 30 so. minutes of drunken Irish jokes <laughs> and then and make you cry for 15. Okay. And okay, <laughs> good. Well, actor Alan Thicke and MC Alan Thicke, thank you again for joining me and thank you for joining us at the Day of Hope for Diabetes. And thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web. Enrich your life and be inspired at the McCallum Theater. At the heart of our community is a unique place that nurtures the creative spirit inside us all. We welcome the best artists and shows with stunning acoustics and luxurious surroundings to our one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art performing arts center. We hope you'll come experience this unique, world-class venue with us. This is the McCallum Theater. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988.